Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah everyone. Inshallah you're doing well. Today is the first day of the new year 2023 and I figured it would be a great day to start tadabbur, reflections inshallah. And I used to do Quran and coffee every Friday. Today is Sunday, but we'll still do Quran and coffee inshallah. So uh, grab your mushaf, grab your Quran, grab your latte, your coffee preferably. If you have chai or tea, we'll still let you join, inshallah, or water. Or if you're fasting, may Allah accept, inshallah. But most importantly, bring your mushaf, inshallah. So grab your Quran, we're going to dive deep, inshallah, into some words in Surah Al-Kahf, some verses in Surah Al-Kahf. So bismillah, let's get started, inshallah. How's everybody doing? Yes, the person who said um, you want to sign up for the five surahs, inshallah, which is about to close very soon, actually, so... Um, uh, DM me, inshallah, Samira. I think is your name. Uh, so yeah, Samira, just DM me, and I'll and I'll help you out, inshallah. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna pin the verse we're gonna start at. Um, we're gonna we're doing Surah Al Kahf reflection. So I'm just, actually I'm just gonna write Surah Al Kahf, just so people when they come in late they won't be confused, because we're gonna go all through Surah Al Kahf actually, inshallah. So let's start there. <clears throat> um, I wanted to talk about finding rahma or finding mercy because a lot of times, you know, we just ended a year and a lot of times like that um, inspires people to reflect. And a lot of times like we're like trying to reflect on like where was the rahma in our life? Where was the mercy in our life? You know, what openings, you know, what were we happy about that we did and accomplished in the last year? What What did we not do that we want to see more of? Um, and a lot of questions I get is like how to be receptive to the rahmah that Allah is sending you. Because sometimes Allah is sending you mercy and compassion, but it's in a different form than what you expected. And this is what we're going to be talking about today in Surah Al-Kahf, inshallah. What we're going to do for those that are here, we're going to trace the words of rahmah in Surah Al-Kahf. So we're going to go through all the words of rahmah in Surah Al-Kahf, um, inshallah, together. Okay, so there's one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. So there's seven in Surah Al-Kahf. And then we're going to do another exercise, inshallah, after we're done, just to combine it all together. All right, so Bismillah, we're going to start at 18.10. So for those who have their Mus'haf open, go to Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 10. And this is uh, the call of the, the people of the cave, you know, the boys who had to escape persecution. This is what they are saying in 18.10. And I'll read the verse, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا So it says, remember when those youth took refuge in the cave and said our Lord, grant us mercy from yourself and guide us through our ordeal. So here is the first time you see Rahma in Surah Al-Kahf. And these people are asking Allah for Rahma. Imagine these people who are escaping persecution, escaping you know, such an um, environment that was weighing heavily on them, that was persecuting them. And he here they're asking Allah for Rahma. Right? Rabbana atina min ladunka Rahma. Right? From you give us mercy. From you give us uh, compassion from you shower us with your rain right so here is the first time you see in surah al-kahf what's going on is they're asking for rahma right so keep that in mind for those who are taking notes the first time you see it in surah al-kahf it's asking for rahma right and then the next time it's going to show up is in verse 16 now verse 16 comes and what happens what does allah say وَإِذِ اعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ so now Allah says, now that you've distanced yourselves from them and what they worship besides Allah. So now that Allah says, look, you took the right path, you took the right stand for his sake. Now take refuge in the cave, right? seclude yourself for his sake right isolate yourself for his sake what will happen Allah will extend his mercy on you 
So now in verse 10, it was an ask for mercy. Verse 16 is a promise for mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not just that, and Allah says that Allah will accommodate you in your ordeal. So remember, they were asking for Allah, ya Allah help us through this ordeal. Allah is saying, okay, you're asking for mercy, I'll give you mercy. And you're asking for help through what you're going through, I will help you through your circumstance, right? So the second time we see Rahmah is Allah saying, I will give you what you're asking for, right? That's verse 16. Now let's go to the third time Rahmah is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, right? So we're going to see this beautiful transition, subhanAllah. Like we're going to see Rahmah, inshaAllah, right? And the Quran is Rahmah, is a mercy. So the first time is asking and then the promise, right? I'm going to write this down because I'm taking notes as we're talking. Asking and then Allah promising, right? Okay. Now verse 58 comes, what does Allah say? وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ I won't read the rest of the verse, but Allah says, starts off verse 58, And your Lord is all-forgiving, full of mercy. One of mercy. Right? And I want you to pay attention in verse 58, how Allah could have said, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحْمَانِ If it was the same way, in the same con- you know, the, the same way it's mentioned in Arabic, it would say, الْغَفُورُ The forgiving, the most merciful. But here it says, the forgiving, the one of mercy, full of mercy. So here there's an emphasis on the mercy. And my friend, may Allah reward her, was saying how this shows you that mercy is like, the rahmah is like a tabi', is like a stamp, right? And it kind of almost reminded me of, you know, it, it spreads easily. Allah's rahmah spreads. You know, Allah says in Surah Al-Araf, that, rahmati kulla shay, that Allah's mercy encompasses everything. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, صِبْغَةَ الله وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ صِبْغَةَ That this is the, a lot of times صِبْغَةَ is translated as like to the way of Allah, to the colors. But صِبْغَةَ is actually a dye. And when you think of a dye, you know when you put like one drop of like food coloring in water, what happens to the water? It becomes the color of that one drop, right? And in the same way that when you seek Allah's rahma, it's expansive, right? It showers you, right? It takes over subhanAllah the situation for you. And that's what we see with the people of the cave. Like it took over. They asked Allah for rahmah, Allah promised them rahmah and it took over their situation. It flipped their situation to the better, subhanAllah. So here in verse 58, Allah says, know who Allah is, right? So first, the first time we see it in Surah Al-Kahf, rahmah being mentioned is the asking for rahmah. Number two is Allah promising rahmah. And then the, the third time, it's said that Allah is of rahmah. So know who Allah is, right? Allah is full of mercy. So know who you're asking, right? Um, and then it's going to come in 65. So this is the fourth time it's mentioned in 65. Now this is the story where Prophet Musa salam, sees this person. And who is this person? Let's see. And this is verse 65. فَوَجَدَ عَبَدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا So now Prophet Musa a.s. And the person who was with him, they found a servant of ours, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to whom we granted mercy from us and enlightened with knowledge of our own. So now the fifth time it's um, mentioned is what? Is Allah saying, look at this person who Allah gave mercy to. So what does this do? This gives you hope, right? Because in the beginning you see people asking for mercy and Allah promising to shower you with mercy, and then saying Allah is full of mercy, and now you're seeing a real life example of someone who Allah gave mercy to, and not just mercy, knowledge from Him. And and if you look at sixty five, it's important to see and note that it's all from Allah. Look, Allah says, "Ataynahu, we gave him rahma min indina from us, and we taught him from us." So it's important to to see where the rahma is coming from. Right? Don't miss where it's coming from because sometimes, oh, fifth time, thank you, 65 is the fifth time. Um, so in the fifth time, you're seeing a tangible, real life 
example of somebody who has um, experienced Allah's mercy in their life, right? So you're getting closer. Right? You're getting closer and closer as you go through uh, the surah. So for those who are taking notes, the fourth one was uh, 58, correct? We just went through it. I think I just, I didn't write that one. Um, yeah, okay. So then, uh, this is 65, correct? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this person has mercy, right? So now as we're getting closer, it's like, okay, Allah has given this person mercy. This person was Al-Khadr. And his story is subhanAllah amazing because Musa, Prophet Musa alayhi salam is going to ask him, can I come accompany you, right? And he's going to say, you don't have enough sabr, you know, you're not going to be able to persevere through what I'm going to show you. And then Musa alayhi salam promises that he will, right? So then we go through the story. So the next two times mercy is going to be mentioned is when? Is when um, Musa alayhi salam sees what happens with Al-Khadr, okay? So now... In your notes, you can write that, you know, some uh, the, the, the time it's mentioned fourth is someone experiencing mercy, right? So a real life example, right? A real life example. Um, and then we're going to go to verse 81. So we go from 81 to, um, I mean, sorry, from 65 to 81. So 81 and 82 are going to talk about mercy also. And this is interesting, okay? So after what happens, happens, right? So Musa alayhi salam is with Al-Khadr, this person who Allah has given mercy and wisdom to. And so many things had happened, right, through the doings of Al-Khadr. And Musa alayhi salam kept saying, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you do that, right? And now the answer comes. In verse 81, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, right, through the uh, mouth of Al-Khadr, what does Al-Khadr say? فَأَرَدْنَا أَن يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا So Khadr says that we did what we did because we hoped that their Lord would give them another more virtuous and caring in his place who has more mercy for them. So now you're tying an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to happen for rahmah. Right? Allah is saying that He wanted more rahmah for them, right? So now you're getting, you keep getting closer. Allah is saying, look, you see why this action happened? Because Allah wanted more rahmah for this person, right? Um, and then the next verse is going to also mention rahmah, which is verse 82. And now He's explaining why He did what He did with the wall. Okay, so this is a longer verse, verse 82. وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً رَحْمَةً مِّنْ رَبِّكَ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا So now, this is the sixth time that Rahmah is mentioned in the surah. And what is being said here, now... He's giving the explanation of why he did with the wall what he did. He says, as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city. And under the wall was a treasure that belonged to them. And their father had been a righteous man. So your Lord willed that these children should come out of age and retrieve their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. I did not do it all on my own. This is the explanation of what you could not bear patiently. Now, what's interesting here is that when you read this verse in Arabic and you're saying the action, right? And take out their treasure. There's no pause between the treasure taken out and the rahma being descended. It's together, right? There's, even when you read it in Arabic, like look at your mushaf, right? For those who are reading it, the, the verses in Arabic. There's no pause 
between the kanz, the action that happened, and the rahma that Allah is explaining that this is rahma. It's kanzahuma rahma, right? That this thing happened as a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's connected. A lot of times we want to like detach the action from Allah's mercy. But here Allah blends it for us. And if you compare this to what happened in the beginning of the surah, right? We were saying this is the sixth time rahma is mentioned in the surah. And in the first time it's being asked for. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً right? Ya Allah, give us rahmah. And then Allah says, Yanshur lakum. Then Allah says, I will give you rahmah. And then Allah says, I am al ghafuru dur rahmah. I am of mercy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of a person who atainahu rahmah. We gave this person rahmah, mercy from us. And then 81, 82, we're seeing clear cut examples, which you can say are almost opposite examples. Because in the first example, a boy was taken away. That was mercy. And the second example, something was being built, that was also mercy, right? So it, sometimes the factors don't make sense for us. But Allah is saying, you can't detach this action from my mercy. It's all a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. SubhanAllah, right? And here Allah is explaining to us how this is a rahmah, right? What a, what a mercy that we are getting this story in the Quran. That Allah is saying, yeah, things might not make sense for you, but that doesn't mean there's no mercy in it. That doesn't mean that Allah didn't take you into account. Allah does things for you at the end of the day. This is your creator, your caretaker, right? So Allah is saying, don't detach my rahmah from the action, right? It's coming together. So 81 and 82, we're seeing the action with the mercy, right? And then it's going to be said one final time. Rahmah is going to be mentioned one final time. Let's see what, what that is, right? That is in verse 98. So verse 98 is the final seventh time Rahmah is mentioned in this verse. And it says, قَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي So now he says, this is a mercy from my Lord. And now this is a different story the Quran is speaking. But the point is, at the end of Surah Al-Kahf, you see someone say, this is a mercy from my Lord. This, what I have with me, is a mercy. Right? This is a mercy. <laughs> Somebody finding mercy. Right? Subhanallah. I want you to compare, like we went through seven verses of Rahmah. We traced through Rahmah in Surah Al-Kahf, right? Seven verses. I want you to compare the first verse to the last, which is verse 10 to verse 98. Verse 10 People are asking Allah for rahmah. And verse 98 is someone saying, this is rahmah. I have rahmah. Right? What does that show you? Like, it's you're seeing someone being answered. You're seeing the answer in your life. Right? You're seeing somebody who had hope to Allah manifesting that hope for them. Right? To Allah giving them that ask. Right? And although there were different people, we went through so many different stories that looked so different. Look at the different trials and tribulations in each story. We each have different lives, right? We each have different lives, right? But there's mercy in each of our lives, even though they look different. And that's the same for all these stories in Surah Al-Kahf. So, um, there's a uh, generous, let me get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven, I'm not counting the best Basmala, so maybe that's why you're confused. There's only seven times they're mentioned. There are 10, verse 10, verse 16, verse 58, verse 65, 81, 82, and 98. Right. So those are the three. Inshallah, when I post this video, I'll um, put it in the comments so you guys can see, inshallah. So look at the rahmah that we're seeing manifested in the surah. Right. From one, the ask, to someone saying, Hada rahmah. And I love when you get to the end of surah al-kahf, and you see someone clearly saying, Hada rahmatum rabbi. This is a mercy from my Lord. Right? What beautiful wording to answer al kahf with. Someone saying, This is a rahma from my Lord. Exactly full circle. Yeah, jazakallah khair. And now we, we finished with al kahf, right? That was just tracing the word of rahma in surah al kahf. I want to go into the next surah for a second. 
Okay. The next surah is Surah Maryam. And Surah Maryam actually mentions Ar-Rahman. It mentions Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, more times than any surah in the Quran. Right? So mercy is mentioned in Surah Maryam as Allah Ar-Rahman more than any other surah in the Quran. Okay? So that's right after Surah Al-Kahf where that started off with someone asking for mercy and then at the end we see somebody attaining mercy and then now into a chapter full of mercy which is Surah Maryam, right? And now specifically go to verse 2. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ This is a reminder of your Lord's mercy to his servant Zakariya. So what a beautiful transition from Surah Al-Kahf to Surah Maryam when you're looking at this tracing of mercy. Immediately Surah Maryam starts off with, let me remind you more of Allah's mercy. Let me show you more of what Allah's Rahmah can do, of what finding Allah's Rahmah can do for you in your life. And one of the du'as I love of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he taught us is, Ya Allah bi rahmatika astaghith. It's through your Rahmah that I'm asking Allah to shower me with, right? Because that Rahmah is going to do everything for me. It's through Allah's Rahmah that we get anything good, right? It's through His mercy and compassion, subhanAllah. And so now we went, we, we, we traced Surah Al-Kahf, uh, the Rahmah in Surah Al-Kahf. We started off with Surah Maryam, Rahmah. And now I'm going to take you somewhere different. Let's, you know, we call this Quranic Ocean for a reason. We're diving deep right now, right? We're making connections in the waves. So now go to 26. 18. Okay, Surah 26 is Surah an naml Okay. So 26. Wait, sorry, not 26. Sorry, forgive me. 27. 27 is the right one. 27, Surah an naml 27, 18. Okay. So 27, 18, we see Prophet Sulaiman approaching... Uh, ants, right? And look what the ants say. I'm going to read 18 and 19 just so you guys can make the connection, inshallah, okay? So we're, we're doing 27, 18, and 19 for those who just joined. Sorry. <laughs> قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم وهم لا يشعرون فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّن قَوْلِهَا وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهِ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ So the verse translation is, And when they came across a, a valley of ants, so this is Prophet Sulaiman and his people, And when they came across a valley of ants, an ant warned, O ants, go quickly into your homes, so Sulaiman and his armies do not crush you unknowingly. Right? She was afraid that Sulaiman and his people are going to crush them without noticing. And then what happens in the next verse? So Sulaiman smiled in amusement at her words and prayed, My Lord, inspire me to always be thankful for your favors, which you have blessed me and my parents with, and to do good deeds that please you. And now, this is why I share this verse. Admit me by your mercy. Admit me by your mercy, by your rahmah, into the company of your righteous servants. Now, 
what a beautiful dua. Like, this dua is so beautiful. For those who don't have it memorized, I highly recommend you memorize 2719. Such a beautiful dua of uh, Prophet Sulaiman It's very similar to 4615. So if you guys want to memorize more du'as that are in the Qur'an, 4615 and 2719, both beautiful du'as that are very similar. But here, Sulaiman is making this du'a. But before what happened is this aunt sees Sulaiman and his people and she calls her people to safety, right? And she says, you know, go into your homes so Sulaiman doesn't crush you. But the, the word is, وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ While they don't notice. Now, what I did before this live is I went and traced all the times that specific phrase was mentioned. وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ In the Qur'an. Every single time, وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ was mentioned in the Qur'an. Which means, while they did not notice. While they were not noticing, right? That was mentioned 10 times in the Qur'an. And many of the times it's mentioned with people who lived their lives in ghafla, they lived their lives heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and they were not noticing the fact that they're going to uh, one day meet Allah, right? So they were negligent of their own purpose in life, right? They neglected to serve their creator, their purpose in life. They were unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life. May Allah protect us, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of these people in those ver a lot of those verses. But I wanted to focus on specifically here where it's mentioned. Because here the aunt is talking about Prophet Sulaiman. She's saying maybe Prophet Sulaiman won't notice. Right? Maybe Prophet Sulaiman won't notice, so let's hide. But immediately what do you get in the next verse? He does notice. Right? He smiles in amusement at what she says. And today it made me realize, subhanAllah, that what makes us notice in life? What makes you mindful? What makes you aware of Allah in your life? Right? What makes you feel like, you know what? Maybe what happened wasn't pleasant, but maybe there's rahmah in it that I don't see. What makes you feel like, you know, like that, right? What inspires you to be able to see rahmah in moments of your life that don't make sense? That is the question here, right? Because the verse before was saying they might not notice, but he does notice. And my ask is, what makes you notice? And I feel like what makes us notice is in his dua. What does he say in the end of the dua? I'm not, I have a live that I go only into this dua. For those who are interested, you can go back to my IGTV. I did 2719 on its own, inshallah. So I'm not going to go into the whole dua at this time. But I want to go into the end of the dua, right? To connect it to Surah Al-Kahf, to the rahmah that we were tracing. He asks in the end, أَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ Ya Allah, through your mercy... Let me enter this realm of righteousness. Let me enter this realm of seeing clearly, right? And working for your sake through your rahmah. Because it's only through your mercy that I can do anything good. And, and it's only through your mercy that I can notice things around me. What gives your heart insight to see around you? What gives your eyes the ability to see? What gives your ears the ability to hear? What awakens your senses better than Allah's rahmah for you, Allah's mercy? To be in touch with Allah in your life, a rahman in your life. So here Prophet Sulaiman being in touch with his creator awakened his senses. And obviously he had this miracle of hearing the animals, but to, to step aside that from for a second, right? What awakens your senses to be receptive to Allah's rahmah around you? To be receptive of that, right? And he's saying, Ya Allah, enter me. He could have said, enter me fi ibadik. Immediately, the dua could have said, enter me into your servants who, uh, you know, worship you. But instead, he says, enter me through your mercy into the servants, right? So why is it through your mercy? To understand that nothing good can come out with Allah's rahmah. Right? That... Our actions, our actions because of His rahmah for us. That, you know, Allah inspires us to do things out of His mercy. Right? Allah inspires us to make dua for Him because of His mercy. Allah, you know, inspires us through His mercy to ask for His mercy. Right? SubhanAllah. So, it's just beautiful to connect these verses to what we were looking at in Surah Al-Kahf. Because in Surah Al-Kahf, right, we started tracing rahmah. 
from beginning, from verse 10, all the way to verse 98. And we were seeing a, almost a transition, right? So I'm going to go ahead and recap, inshallah, for those who joined. And you can watch this live again, inshallah, for those who missed it. But we were tracing Rahmah in Surah Al-Kahif, right? In, surah, in the first time, it came seven times, right? So in, number t in verse 10, asking for mercy. Verse 16, Allah promising mercy. Verse 58, Allah is saying He is full of mercy. And then verse 65, we see a real life example of someone who was who was given mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in 81 and 82, we see two real life examples of actions that only happened because of Allah's rahmah. And there were two different circumstances that looked completely different. And Allah is saying both of those actions were because of Allah's rahmah. And then the last time it's mentioned is verse 95 where, Allah, where someone says, Hada rahmah. This is a mercy. Somebody clearly saying, what I have in front of me, this is only a mercy from Allah. It's not my doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this through His mercy, right? Somebody attaining and finding mercy in their life, right? So we go from the, the ask to the answer, right? In Surah Al-Kahf. And then we go into Surah Maryam with a mention of the mercy that Allah gave Zakaria salam. And then now we're talking about 27, 18, 19, how Prophet Sulaiman is asking Allah to enter him through his mercy. And subhanAllah how in, in verse 27, 18, the people were asking for safety, right? The ants, sorry, not the people. The ants were wanting safety, right? It says, go into your homes so, you, so you're not crushed. So they were seeking safety. What is Prophet Sulaiman seeking? Allah's Rahmah, which is the best safety. That is the best safety net. Right? Better than a home is Allah's Rahmah. Because Allah's Rahmah is eternal. Right? It's infinite. It's expansive. And subhanAllah, when, when people pass away, what do we say? Allahumma rahamhum. Allah have mercy on them. Because that is the best home you can go to. Right? The best home you can go to is Allah's Rahmah. Allah's mercy. May Allah have mercy on us when we pass, inshallah. And I'll end with this. There's a surah, surah Ali Imran, I believe. Uh, yes, and Allah tells us about people who, on the on Yom Al Qiyam, on the end of time, at the end of time, right? Allah tells us of people whose faces are brightened, right? These people are people of Jannah, and Allah tells us about them. What do you think Allah would say of these people of Jannah in Surah Ali Imran? A lot of times when we talk about Jannah, we want to rush to what they're enjoying, right? The couches that they're leaning on, the drinks that they're drinking from, right? Like the people who are with them, right? The the, the water that they're swimming in. Like you, your your mind goes to like the physical experience, right? But what does Allah say about these people? It says, وَأَمَّا بِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ Those who whose faces have been brightened, فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ they are in the mercy of Allah forever. That's it. That's the only thing mentioned about them. They're in the mercy of Allah. And subhanAllah, think of everything Allah could have mentioned here about these people. Allah could have said they're enjoying this and that and they're reclining here and they're with their friends forever. But it suffices you to say that you're in the mercy of Allah. Ya Allah, I'm in your mercy. And that's enough for me. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sums up so beautifully this scene for us of how safe and how an amusement and eternal comfort and peace these people are. فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ <laughs> They're in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the mercy that we ask for in this life. That is the mercy that we start off our days with. Right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Anything, any action you do, you start off with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, seeking Allah's rahmah subhanAllah. So it just shows you that Allah wants that mercy for you. Allah wants that comfort and peace for you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us, you know, to continue to experience His rahmah in our lives, inshallah. Whether things go our way or not, but to continue to find His rahmah in every circumstance we're in. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. This is Maryam going crazy, as you can tell. And uh, I'll go to her right now, inshallah. But for those who don't um, know, I'm having a class for sisters, five surah in five months. So we're going to go through five surahs in five months. 
I'm about to close it. So you have like 24 hours maybe to sign up. Uh, we're going to start with Surah Al-Najm. We're going to go in order from Surah Al-Najm, which is Surah 53. And we're going to go to Surah 57, um, which is Al-Hadid. And in it, we're going to do Surah Rahman, inshaAllah, Al-Waqi'ah, Al-Qamar, some really beautiful short uh, surahs. But there's so much to soak you know, through them, alhamdulillah. So if you can join, please join. I would love to see you there, inshaAllah. We're starting this Thursday. So that's why I'm about to close the class. So for those who want to join, I would join uh, right now, inshaAllah. May Allah accept. And jazakallah khair for tuning in. Inshallah, enjoy your coffee or chai or tea, whatever you're drinking. And for those who took notes, I would love to see your notes. Inshallah, I love when you guys share notes with me. All right, take care, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.